Thank you so much for inviting me here today. Um, I'm, as, as Trina said, I'm Amy Heister Miller. I'm the president and CEO of Whole Women's Health and Whole Women's Health Alliance. And we have, we, we provide fabulous abortion care and we fight the, the draconian abortion regulations and restrictions. And we've been doing that since we opened our doors first um, 16 years ago this month in 2003 in Austin, Texas. We're now in six different states, and um, we're really honored to be here in the Commonwealth providing um, abortion care services and reproductive health care to women and families. As abortion providers, we believe that everybody de deserves dignity, deserves respect, and that our patients should be at the center of their own health care decisions. That's why we fight harmful anti-abortion laws, and that's why we support legislation like this. Last summer, Whole Women's Health Alliance teamed up with our allies in the Commonwealth to file a comprehensive lawsuit, Falls Church versus Herring, demanding the repeal of these anti-abortion laws because the situation is dire. We know that access to abortion care is vital for many healthy communities. <coughs> Women and families are stronger, healthier, and better off when they have access to a full range of comprehensive health care services, and that includes abortion care. <coughs> Virginia could and should do better. Passing the Repeal Act is the first step, and we are proud to be here with our allies to support this act today. I'm Kathy Tran. I represent the 42nd House District. And simply put, I trust women to make decisions about their health care and their bodies. And today I stand proudly with Governor Northam, <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Fairfax, uh, Senator McClellan, and so many of my colleagues in the House and Senate, A-Roll Pro-Choice Virginia, Planned Parenthood Advocates of Virginia, and Whole Women's Health, and many others to make sure we continue to fight that women have the freedom and dignity to make their healthcare decisions without any interference from politicians. I introduced House Bill 2491, the repeal law, to lift medically unnecessary and unduly burdensome requirements for women to access abortions in the Commonwealth. This bill removes hospital requirements on clinics and providers, laws that mandate informed consent, a combination of mandatory ultrasounds, biased literature and, 20, and the 24-hour waiting period, and additional doctor requirements for late-term abortions. In 2016, the Supreme Court case, Whole Women's Health versus Hellerstedt, the court ruled that states cannot place restrictions on women seeking an abortion that create an undue burden. And we must bring Virginia into compliance with the court ruling by repealing these undue burdens and expanding reproductive rights. Virginia thrives when families are strong and healthy, and public opinion shows that women's access to reproductive health is a priority. These restrictions harm women and have their disproportionate effects on low-income women and women of color. I look forward to working with all of my colleagues and our allies to make sure that we pass this bill and further advance reproductive freedom for all Virginians. Thank you. Unfortunately, today, about an hour ago, the Senate version of the Repeal Act died on party line vote. So, we continue to fight, and we will be back next year to make sure that the Repeal Act passes. Thank you. Good morning. I am Senator Jennifer Boisco, um, former member of the House of Delegates and former board member of NARAL Pro-Choice Virginia. Um, today, I was very disappointed. The anti-abortion legislators in the Senate just about an hour ago voted against the Reproductive Freedom Act, and they are sending a clear message to Virginians. They don't believe that women in the Commonwealth deserve to, the freedom or the dignity to make their own personal and private decisions for themselves. Today, anti-abortion politicians declared that they will not stand up and protect our Virginia women who should put their rights uh, over ours should it be stripped away from the federal government. However, Delegate Herring and I will stand with you today and every day and will continue to fight for reproductive freedom as will the rest of my colleagues standing here by my side. And I thank you for your time. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It has been a real privilege for me to be a consistent and steadfast champion in Richmond for Virginia women and reproductive rights. I have been proud to stand alongside you the governor, lieutenant governor, and our pro-choice allies in the legislature to be a brick wall against the attacks on women's reproductive rights. <laughs> it's those who would dictate to women what they can and cannot do with their own health care and their own bodies. 
And we've got a lot of momentum going. Uh, in 2017, Virginia elected three pro-choice statewide state elected officials, 15 new pro-choice delegates, and last week, this past election, this past election elected three pro-choice congresswomen. So we are on a roll. But as we saw in committee this morning, in order to really truly protect women's rights and their reproductive freedoms, we need a pro-choice majority in the General Assembly. Because it matters who represents you. It matters who your governor is. It matters who your legislators are. It matters, yes, who your attorney general is. <laughs> for the last five years, I have fought for justice and equality and opportunity for all Virginians. And I have made protecting the economic, health care, and reproductive rights of Virginia women a priority as attorney general. That has not always been the case with some of my predecessors. I have gone to court to fight to protect the Affordable Care Act. And, you know, the Affordable Care Act now, we've gotten 200,000 Virginians covered under Medicaid. We've gotten 400,000, over 400,000 now get their health care on the exchange. 1.3 million Virginians have pre-existing conditions, and the Affordable Care Act provides equal health care access for women. And I'm not going to stand by idly while a Texas judge overturns all of that, and I'm going to continue to go all the way to the Supreme Court if I have to, to protect Virginians' health care. I've also issued legal opinions that were, one of them was used to help protect against a 20-week abortion ban bill that came up in the General Assembly, and another one protected women's health clinics from the owner's trap regulations. We've joined lawsuits to protect funding for Planned Parenthood in Title X, which provides such important health care services for low-income women. And just this week, we got an injunction against the Trump administration's effort to roll back contraception coverage. And that means Virginia women will continue to be able to get no co-pay contraception and get it without interference from their employer or the government. And that's why I'm proud to stand with the pro-choice advocates here you know, we've got a lot of good things going, but obviously, as you can see from what happened this morning, we've got a lot more work to do. So thank you for your continued advocacy. Uh, I want to thank this tremendous uh, gathering of leaders who are standing up for women here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, I want to thank my friend, the Attorney General Mark Herring, for his leadership, and our great governor, uh, Dr. Ralph Northam, for being consistent champions uh, for women's control of their own reproductive health, uh, their own economic futures, uh, and their own families. Uh, as I'd like to say, I was raised by a strong woman, I am married to one, and now I am raising one. And our seven-year-old daughter. And I want to make sure that my daughter has the exact same shot in life as everyone else. And what that means is that we have to be consistent in standing up uh, for her constitutional rights, uh, for the rights of all women to have the exact same shot at the American dream as we all want for our sons. And so that is what this uh, group of leaders is standing up and saying today, is that Virginia is now awake. Uh, Virginia is now on the march to progress and to freedom for women. Virginia will be a leader. We will no longer lag. We will no longer be dragged back uh, into a past where women did not have control uh, of their own fates and their own futures. Uh, and so though we had some setbacks today uh, in committee uh, around this legislation, uh, please be on notice uh, that when we come back uh, for our next General Assembly session, it will be a very different outcome because we will have more allies in the House and in the Senate uh, and as the Lieutenant Governor of Virginia, I will continue to bang that gavel for progress, break ties in favor of women and of our Virginia families. Uh, and I know uh, that Virginia will be a bright light in the middle of the darkness that the Trump administration has brought uh, around these issues. So, Tarina, thank you, uh, and NARAL Pro-Choice Virginia for your leadership. Uh, prior to taking this role, I was on the board of Planned Parenthood, Metropolitan Washington Action Fund, and was proud uh, to serve in that partner organization to stand up uh, for women's reproductive health care. We are on the right side of history. 73% uh, of Americans support Roe v. Wade, 67% uh, of Americans support abortion in all or most cases. It is a fundamental constitutional right. Uh, it's also the right thing for us to fight for. Uh, so I look forward to us continuing 
uh, our march toward progress, our march on behalf of women, and I thank you all for joining us in this most important endeavor. God bless you all. Thank you. I want to thank you before you speak. Um, it's just, I failed to <laughs> Sorry, I the question out of the way. Um, I just wanted to thank the governor and his team. They have signed on to prioritize the two bill, bills that we talked about today, uh, the uh, Repeal Act and the Reproductive Freedom Act, that is part of uh, the governor's uh, priority legislation. So thank you so much, thank Governor, you, and now you can All right. <laughs> I take my marching orders here at work. I do the same when I go home at night. I am well trained. But Karina, thank you for bringing this group together. This is a very, very important issue, one that we have been uh, why, uh, working on and fighting for for years. So thank you to your team, all the advocacy groups. I, I thank all of you for being in the audience today. Uh, this is a, a team effort. As we say, it takes a village, and I am so glad that you all are part of the the village that is, is working to make sure that women uh, have access to reproductive care and that they can make their own decisions. And to our legislators, thank you all for taking time out of what I know is a very busy schedule to be here today to advocate and for also for carrying these important pieces of legislation. <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, interesting. Uh, I started my political career here in Richmond in 2008. Um, and ever since I've been here, I have been fighting against the anti-choice legislators, the anti-choice pieces of legislation. We all remember the trap laws, which were just so onerous to women in trying to receive access to health care. And then we had the infamous transvaginal ultrasound bill, um, which was an embarrassment to the Commonwealth of Virginia. And I, I thank you all for doing everything that you could to fight that. We had the 24-hour waiting period which is also onerous to women seeking access to reproductive care. And then, believe it or not, the attempt to introduce and pass a law that re would require women to report a miscarriage to the police. Really? How about letting women report their health issues to their providers rather than the police? So this is what we have been up against over the years. and. I will remind you, as I have in the past, that there is no excuse that a group of legislators, just as we saw this morning, most of whom are men, by the way, that should be telling women what they should and shouldn't be doing with their bodies, that needs to stop in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And if we have anything to do with it, it will. Last year, we worked and fought together to <coughs> increase health care access to 400,000 working Virginians. Obviously, many of them women. Now these women have access to going to see a provider, to, to have preventive care, to, to do well uh, visits. All of these things are important, to have access to contraception something that we have also fought for every year and were finally <coughs> able to get it into the budget was to make sure that women had, had access to LARCs, long-acting reversible contraception. Uh, that's what most women prefer to have. It's their choice. We as policymakers shouldn't be telling women and their physicians what's in their best interest. So, so we have a lot of work to do and as you know I do support the repeal bill. We need to get rid of these onerous pieces of legislation and we also need to to make sure that we put in our code that women that women are the ones that should be uh, having the choice to to make regarding their reproductive health care so I I thank you all for being here today as as our Attorney General and Lieutenant Governor and, and our delegates and senators have said we still have work to do um, I remind people all the time that we work we try to reach out and explain to why these issues. I have sat there and, and as a doctor, told people, told legislators, why it's so important for women and their providers to make these choices, not legislators. But sometimes that doesn't work. So when we can't change people's minds, mm -hmm. we need to change seats. And <laughs> You. We've got a lot of work to do, but uh, as a team, we're going to get it done. So, Tarina, thank you for putting us together this morning, and uh, you all have a great rest of the day. Thank you all so much. Thank you.